In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we're talking with Mike Brown, his football life, from the expansion of the Cincinnati Bengals. What did he have to do to get the franchise here in Cincinnati all the way through the Super Bowl era of the 1980s, two Super Bowls, to the current Joe Burrow-led Cincinnati Bengals and everything in between? You're going to really like it. Talk about your, your brothers a little bit. Robin, unfortunately, uh, I remember in 1978, passed away and uh, at a very young age. I remember Paul telling the team, um, you know, about it and how emotional a time it was for your family. Robin was a hell of an athlete, though. Tell us about the prowess of, of, uh, of Robin Brown. Well, my older brother, Robin, he was three years older than I. And uh, he was the athlete in the family, there was Robin, myself, and my younger brother, Pete. Right. And uh, Robin could uh, run. Uh, he went over where they were practicing track. Uh, he played baseball where he was a very good player. And uh, he went over and uh, ran a 100-yard dash with the track team, and he won that easily with really? their guys. And uh, he, he was fast. He uh, uh Played basketball, uh, 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 swam. He was on the state winning relay team as a swimmer. Uh, he was, a, uh, I guess it was second string all city, as that's in Cleveland, that's a big city, as a uh, uh, single wing. Uh, uh, quarterback, he, he took the ball from center, and uh, that's how it worked back then. He he was a, a, a really good athlete, good enough that uh, Miami in Florida uh, gave him a scholarship, and uh, he went down there. And his career ended when his suspension helmet they gave these freshmen. Uh, back then at Florida or Miami, these uh, helmets that were not up to par and, and the uh, structure of the suspension the helmet uh, broke and his head hit up against the helmet and whoever ran into him, they made him a safety down there. Hmm. And uh, uh, he was knocked out for a day. He was unconscious for a day. Wow. And uh, that was the end of his uh, playing career as an athlete, but uh, he left home to go to college. He had a scholarship, and for the rest of his life, from the minute he walked out the door, he was self-sustaining. He uh, uh, went through college. He had uh, uh, an entrepreneurial kind of job. When he left college, he built a business, and <laughs> he was very remarkable. Uh, far more uh, enterprising, I think, than uh, I. And unfortunately, he came to uh, contact cancer, and he died at uh, about 48 years of age. He's mm -hmm. a young guy. Did he get drafted by the, was it the Pittsburgh Pirates in baseball? Did somebody drop him in baseball? I don't uh, think so. He would have been capable of yeah. it. He could hit the ball. Uh, and for power, he could run like hell. Hmm. Uh, and uh, he just was good, uh, a really good athlete. Back in those days, people played more than one sport. Right. Today they take a kid and, oh, you're a baseball player, so you do this. And you're a football player, and you do that. Well, in those days, you played all those sports. And I think, in a way, it made uh, guys uh, better. Uh, uh, they they just had a coordination that came to them from all these different experiences that uh, made them better as time went on, and they finally did concentrate on one sport. You mentioned your brother Pete; he had tremendous success with Nautilus and uh, entrepreneurship yeah. himself. I mean, you're you're quite an accomplished family. Talk about Pete a little bit. Well, uh, 
Pete uh, 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 passed away about three years ago now, and every day I think of him. I really do. Uh, but uh, uh, Pete uh, was uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a guard. <laughs> yep. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, laughing uh, with him and at him. He had this idea that he could make himself into some big, powerful <laughs> guy and he lifted weights before that was the thing that came to be across the country. And he um, played in high school football. He played at Denison, where he went to uh, college. And uh, then uh, he came with us as we just got up and going. And he worked here as a uh, scout. But on the side, he uh, built up his own business, which was called uh, Nautilus uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they made uh, their own weight equipment, uh, weightlifting equipment. And um, uh, he built up a sizable business and decided that it was more than he could uh, keep up to, and he sold it, and he, he made uh, real money. And uh, when he sold the business, and he stayed here and continued here in a normal way all this time, um, he, uh, one thing I will just say about him is when he sold the business, he made sure that everybody got taken care of. Uh, and there was a lot of money passed around to the different guys who had worked with him as they developed the business. Um, he was fair to people, is what I'm trying to say. And um, he never bragged on himself in the least. Uh, I, um, uh, I, I was very fortunate to have the two brothers I had and uh, in my eyes in most ways I am the least of the three uh, but they were uh, special guys accomplished guys they did things and uh, they did them uh, on their own gas uh, my way of going about life was a little bit different you go to law school, Harvard Law School. If you if you had not gotten into football to the extent you did, you think you would have been a lawyer? What would you have done if oh, not I, I uh, practiced law for five years, right. but uh, I, I uh, uh, really never took to it. Uh, I, I um, <laughs> just uh, felt that... Um, uh, Shouldn't law be about uh, coming to the uh, best conclusion? Well, law isn't about coming to the best conclusion. It's a very practical thing, and it's adversarial, as you know. And you come to a conclusion, and some of them are uh, better than others. Uh, they uh, evolve over time, and uh, it's very interesting about how it works. Uh, but uh, I always felt that it was a little short of uh, what I uh, had the false impression law was uh, going to be. Anyway, I love the people that I was involved with. They're very bright and fun to be with, lively-minded people, the lawyers. Uh, but I didn't much care for uh, what I was doing. I have to uh, plead guilty that I was uh, on a very low level as... <laughs> A lawyer and uh, very quickly into my experience as a lawyer uh, my father uh, got let go by the Browns and uh, my uh, purpose in life was to uh, get him reestablished and uh, I worked at that right and for five years we uh, worked at uh, getting set up with what became the, the Bengals and that got uh, 
up and running in 1967. We played in 1968, the first year on the field. Uh, but that was a very memorable experience uh, going through all that. And the fact that it uh, came out uh, and we had what we had and it developed the way it did over time uh, has been fortunate for me. Uh, and I uh, uh, think I uh, was uh, lucky. I don't know that I would have been able to uh, have uh, had the role in it I did unless I had been a lawyer. That helped me. But uh, practicing law as such was uh, really not what I was made right. to do. Right. So... Why Cincinnati? I mean, Paul, obviously, Ohio State, great success there. Massillon, even before that. Cleveland, Cincinnati being in the state of Ohio. Was that a factor, why, why you chose Cincinnati as a, as a target? And if was there a plan B if it didn't work out in Cincinnati? And what were the biggest challenges getting it done in Cincinnati? So I threw a whole load at you there. Mike. Yeah, there are a million uh, <laughs> questions on that one. Uh, but uh, I believe that uh, my father's contacts were in Ohio. Right. That's where he was best known. That's where he uh, knew uh, so many people. He was uh, a friend of Governor Rhodes, and uh, we asked Governor Rhodes to help us, and he did. Uh, I thought Cincinnati was a good uh, site. Back then, Cincinnati was the 16th largest market in the country. And uh, I uh, mm -hmm. never would have foreseen that over 50 plus years, uh, maybe 60 now, because from when we first started after the franchise, right. uh, that the uh, uh, populations of the cities in the country would change in the fashion they did. And of course, the South and the West got bigger and wealthier. And, right. Our area uh, did not hold its own. We have uh, uh, gone backwards comparatively. We're right. the same size, actually a little larger here than we were when we first came to town. But uh, we did, we haven't grown here like they have grown, let us say, in Phoenix or Denver or San Diego or I could go on right. with uh, different cities. Uh, it... it uh, was what I thought where we should go. I thought it fit my father. The commissioner wanted us to go to uh, Seattle. Hmm. And uh, back then, Seattle had uh, one business, it seemed to me, Boeing. Uh, that was before all this Internet stuff right. came to be. Right. Uh, and if we had gone there, we would have had to play at the University of Washington's field if they would have had us. Uh, here we uh, grew to know that we could play at the UC field, and we did for the first two years yep. of the Bengals' history on the field, and then uh, during that time we uh, got the new stadium built. That was part of coming down here, was getting a new stadium built, and we got Riverfront Stadium built, and uh, played there for 30 years. Uh, it was a good stadium. Uh, back at that time, they had these dual-purpose stadiums uh, around and about Atlanta, Washington, Pittsburgh, here, many other places at those stadiums. And um, you had both a baseball team and a football team in the same stadium. Sure. So it was efficient. And... Uh, there was something good about that. And then we got into uh, a subsequent phase when stadiums became uh, what the business was about. Yeah, I never subscribed to that. Others in our league, I think, did. And uh, maybe that phase is about to uh, transition into something else. I would think it might be. But we'll see. Anyway, that's a uh, 
a discursion on whatever question you asked. Right. <laughs> Why Cincinnati? And how, how, how tough was the process? I mean, were, were there roadblocks along the way where you thought, oh, geez, I don't know if this is going to happen? Or, or was it uh, not smooth sailing, but was the process pretty, pretty, pretty much what you expected in, in terms of getting an expansion oh, franchise? I was uh, naive. Uh, uh, we probably had... A one in a billion chance of having this succeed. Really? Uh, but it did. And a lot of it was because my father had a prominence that was well known that uh, uh, persuaded people in Ohio, the governor, the people in Cincinnati uh, were taken by his presence and his achievements. Uh, the commissioner uh, uh, was friendly to my father. That was important, but uh, at the end of the run, uh, we didn't get the NFL franchise. Uh, that went to New Orleans. That was the Saints. And the reason it went to New Orleans was that uh, the, new, the senator from Louisiana was properly positioned at the federal level. Mm. And uh, he had uh, the ability to waive the antitrust wand that would made the merger between the AFL, American Football League, right. and the NFL uh, possible. So, <coughs> pardon me, his position was influential in that choice. But we were uh, uh, left out, and there we were, and lo and behold, the uh, American Football League team, that franchise, they, they were going to add another team in the American Football League. Uh, was still uh, open. Uh, my father was uh, not really enthusiastic at first right. about that. He wanted to be in the NFL. He considered himself uh, an NFL guy. And uh, he almost uh, refused the opportunity. Uh, that got to be a real push uh, mm. to get him over the line on that, but he did at the end. And uh, we uh, uh, got that franchise, came here and uh, built it up, got backers, shareholders, uh, and uh, it... it uh, was a wonderful time, very exciting, and uh, very uh, rewarding. And I remember in our first game, we played Kansas City out at Nippert Stadium. I think it was a preseason game. We got walloped. And in those days, uh, believe it or not, you used to settle up after the game. Yeah. In other words, you'd go to a room somewhere in the stadium. And if you were the visiting team, you'd get paid. And if you were the home team, you would pay the visiting team. <laughs> and so uh, I'm there, and I made the payment to the uh, uh, president, general manager of the Chiefs, not Lamar Hunt, Jack Stedman, did that kind of uh -huh. work. And uh, I remember saying at the time, oh, geez, what I've got my father into, I mean, this is terrible. I really I must have made some kind of bad mistake. But uh, that was just the first game. There were many afterwards, and uh, they turned out better. At First Our Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com. Along the way, um, you had a run of quarterbacks. Greg Cook, who unfortunately injured, but would have been, was a superstar. Would have been maybe been Hall of Fame caliber quarterback for sure. Then you have Kenny Anderson and Boomer Sison, back to back to back. That's a pretty darn strong run of, of quarterbacks and successful. Is Joe Burrow that type of guy in your mind? They're all different. They have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I think Joe Burrow 
can come to be a player of that caliber, he has to prove it on the field. He has real special talents. Uh, his are uh, focus first and foremost. Uh, he really uh, uh, studies what he's doing and knows uh, about it. Uh, uh, he's just got an intense uh, focus of mind about football. And that's exceptional. He's accurate. He's got good uh, movement. Uh, I think uh, he can make our offense work effectively. And um, uh, Greg Cook was uh, probably the most talented player. Uh, uh, he was just instinctive. Uh, he he uh, was not like Joe. He didn't go and study. <laughs> <laughs> he just went out there and could do it somehow yeah. miraculously. Right. And uh, any distance, he was accurate, and he was very... Uh, uh, fluid and able to move. Uh, Elway would be about the closest that I could come to him as a comparison. But unfortunately, while Greg led the league in his rookie year passing, and he was hurt for over half the year, yeah. and he still did. Uh, but his uh, uh, his operation, he tore the rotator cuff, but his arm, his shoulder was uh, really uh, destroyed as far, as far as being a player when they uh, operated on him. It wasn't done right. This was up in Cleveland where it was operated. And uh, uh, if he had been healthy, uh, we would have gone for 10 years as the, the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a great quarterback to be that much as Brady has done it for the Patriots, now Tampa. Uh, I do think uh, that uh, Greg Cook would have done that here if he had been able to uh, stay healthy. Uh, Kenny Anderson, very bright, very focused, uh, very athletic. He was your quarterback. Yep. And uh, I think he was an excellent player. He led the league throwing a couple times. Uh, he... Um, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame and it's an affront to uh, this franchise that uh, he has never been uh, accepted into the Hall of Fame. It bothers me that that's how that has resolved. I remember so, you saying that he was the most important player in franchise history. He was. Uh, he he, was, uh, the, he uh, was our quarterback for many years, took us to the Super Bowl, played well enough in the Super Bowl for us to win. Yep. Uh, we just uh, fumbled the ball away in that game, yep. and uh, we deserved to win. I think in that Super Bowl, we were the better team. Mm -hmm. uh, we played San Francisco again in the second Super Bowl that we were in. Uh, Boomer was the quarterback then. Uh, we had a very good team, but I don't think we were the better team that day, but we uh, darn near won that game, and it was very close. Uh, so... Those guys were two Super Bowl quarterbacks, and if you can do that for your team, uh, that's the gold standard in my book. Both MVPs of the league those years, you know, when when, the, when they went to the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, it's it's, um, it's 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 crazy. Let's talk about that a little bit. In your mind, you said it's on the front of the franchise that Kenny Anderson's not in the Hall of Fame. Um, there are Kenny Riley. Um, Willie Anderson. There, there are some guys that can be talked about. Why do you think that there's only one player that played, you know, most of his career as a Cincinnati Bengal? Charlie Joyner was a Bengal, but with a Charger. There are guys you can point to like that, but Anthony Munoz, and rightfully so, great, greatest lineman ever, in my humble opinion, having played next to the guy for a while, Hall of Famer. Why do you think that the number's so sparse? Well, we didn't win the Super Bowl. And that's critical. If you do that, uh, you seem to get extra credit for, as far as uh, having your players taken into the Hall of Fame. And that was probably the principal thing. We never got over that line, which is painful. Uh, I think uh, we're in a small market. Uh, 
we don't get uh, the national notoriety that some right. of the other larger markets do. And some of the teams, such as Green Bay, has had two great quarterbacks back-to-back. -back. Uh, Miami had two great quarterbacks back-to-back. -back. Right. Uh, when you do that, you not only win, uh, you get more attention because teams successful over a long span of time. Uh, we had ups and downs. We had uh, times when we were successful, but not to the degree uh, that uh, Pittsburgh or Miami or Green Bay and maybe some others have. Those are factors. I, I think that uh, there's uh, some injustice in it because we've had great players here that haven't been recognized, and they deserve to be uh, recognized. I regret that they haven't been. Right. Um, I, I, so many guys. I mean, you know, I can go. To, I hate to name names because you don't include them all. Max Montoya, another one that comes to, to mind for me. Um, over Over the... Duration of your career, like you said, there's been ups and, and downs, just like in anybody's career. Would you do anything differently? Uh, are there not regrets as such, but it's like, uh, if I had a chance and opportunity to do this again, I might do it this way or whatever. You ever think about that kind of stuff, Mike, or do you just focus on, okay, the past is the past. I got to get ready for the future here. Well, I don't dwell on it. Uh, would I have done some things differently? Uh, I'm sure I would have. If I look back at specific cases, am I haunted by any of it? No, I am not. Uh, right. I am lucky to have uh, uh, gone down the path I went, and I'm uh, grateful to the people at Cincinnati and others who have uh, uh, supported me in that uh, journey. I know you're a voracious reader. What uh, what's the any good books lately? I know I know that's other hobbies as such, but I know you're a reader. Oh, uh, I'm old, and uh, where I used to play uh, tennis a lot. Right, tennis. Ball. I can't play tennis anymore. I right. can't do much of anything except sit in a chair and read, <laughs> and so that's what I do. Uh, I read mainly uh, history. Uh, uh, I uh, enjoy it. I find it uh, fun. And um, I, I uh, don't pretend to any kind of uh, uh, real knowledge. I'm just uh, is a peripatetic. I go from here to there and walk around and try <laughs> that one and try that one. Right. But I am fortunate that I like to read. If my eyes will just hold up for a while longer, I hope to continue to do it. So we talked about Joe Burrow, and obviously he's the straw that stirs the drink. But you've had a couple of pretty good drafts, uh, very aggressive in free agency last couple of years. Do you feel good about where the franchise is, and in particular with this upcoming season? Well, we're in the process of... Um, uh, being put together. Uh, we're a cake just about ready to go in the oven. It's going to have to bake and then we'll right. pull it out and see how it is. Right. Uh, but we have the ingredients uh, that can make us uh, a good football team. I really believe that. And it's just uh, getting it mashing, getting it to work together like it has to. Uh, part of uh, being a great team, and you would know this better than I, uh, is physical prowess. You have to have the players who just are good enough. I think we have that, uh, but there's more to it. You have to get them to work together. They have to know what to do. They have to be able to do the uh, uh, things that uh, are in the playbook, if you will. And uh, it, part, part of winning in this league is just physical, but the bigger part is mental. You've got to know how to do it and do it reliably. And right. we have to get all that put together. Uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, the other issue that you're aware of, uh, we have a uh, real challenging road in front of us. Uh, the Browns are good. Baltimore is good. Yep. Uh, the Roethlisberger Steelers have been 
uh, tremendous over a long time. So th those are the guys who have asked us to come out and play. Right. <laughs> it it uh, is a tough group to uh, 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 put uh, down. Uh, we'll see where we can go. It uh, might take some time. I don't know how long. But I do feel this, that we have the chance. The Ring of Honor. It's a lot of excitement. Um, what's, your, what's your take on the celebration of players and contributors to the Ring of Honor? Well, I'm very pleased at how it has been received. Uh, my granddaughter, Elizabeth, uh, has come in house here and works with us now, and she's involved in uh, promotional things, and she said to her grandfather that uh, it was time to do this. <laughs> so we are doing this, and uh, I am... Pleased that the reaction the uh, public has taken it well. And most of all, what has pleased me is uh, a lot of the old timers, our players, the guys who got uh, selected in the initial uh, group to uh, be voted on. Uh, a number of them have called, and they're just pleased as punch to have been remembered. Uh, to. Uh, get some acknowledgement yeah. about them as uh, uh, players. These guys were real players, uh, and I think they do deserve recognition. You mentioned Elizabeth. It's the fourth generation now of family involvement with, with the franchise. Your granddaughters both are, are now part of the organization. Your son, your daughter, your son-in-law. I mean, what does that mean to you? Well, that's my purpose in life. Uh, I have to plead guilty to uh, putting my family first and what I have done in life. And I'm proud of every one of them. Uh, it's their turn now. I'm handing the uh, ball off, if you will. And um, it's uh, hard in America to uh, keep a family business going. What's the best piece of advice that your dad gave you that you've passed along? In general, just life in general. Um, I, uh, I, I uh, honestly don't recall him coming up to me and saying, uh, uh, do this, do that. Right. Uh, I watched how he did what he did. Yep. Uh, I... Uh, don't profess to have been anywhere near as successful as he. Uh, I did what I did in my little narrow niche, and it seemed to work. Uh, but it wasn't the achievement in life that he had. Uh, and he never uh, said to me, uh, do it this way, do it that way. Mm -hmm. It was just that I watched, mm -hmm. and I saw, and uh, I learned, and uh, so there's no verbal lesson that I can share with you. I can just tell you that uh, as a young person, I was observant enough. One final question, and can't thank you enough for the time you've carved out here with us. You have a favorite team? <laughs> You've had well, some good teams, uh, and I guess if we include Cleveland, obviously there's some unbelievable teams with the Cleveland Browns. But I mean, in, with with your involvement to the level it is here with the Cincinnati Bengals, do you have a, a favorite team or oh, it's your team, Dave? Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I dare not say. Uh, I right, mean, right. there are a lot of uh, right. guys like you that think it's their team, sure. and, and they should think that. And I want them to think that. You're right, qu quite honestly, they uh, meld together. Uh, we have had great players, great guys, good times. And I'm not going to say just one special moment of it was uh, in first place. They all come for me as a package. And uh, uh, thank goodness for them. I do keep up there on the wall. Someone has taken it down. Oh, there it is. It's uh, 
my dad's 1948 yeah. Cleveland Browns team, yeah. which was undefeated. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, that was uh, a very successful team uh, on the field with great players, Otto Graham, Marion Motley, Dante Lavelli, Lou Groza, others were on that team. That's, a, that's an oh, yeah. They, they, they had uh, uh, a lot of top players, Marion Motley, uh, Max Speedy. It was uh, a special group of guys. But uh, we've had good teams here, too, that I'm proud of. Yeah, looking through the library here that we're, we're in, I mean, all the programs from the Cleveland Browns, programs put in a binder for the year and with the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, there's there's a bunch of history in this room. It's incredible. Uh, just in this little library, what you can uh, what you can garner, you know, in historical franchises for from Cleveland and Cincinnati. It's great. Oh, it's a combination of different books. My dad gave me uh, his books. Uh, that, that's what I got uh, when he went. And uh, some of them are very interesting and fun to look at. One of my favorites uh, uh, is over 100 years old. Somebody pilfered it from a public library because (laughs) you can see that on the front of it. But it uh, shows how to play football back then, and they were suspending a uh, stuffed dummy from a tree limb to show how to tackle (laughs) it. And uh, football has changed some over the years. Got a long history. Uh, uh, I've been fortunate to have been involved in my share of those years. Well, you've certainly had a, a great life and a phenomenal football life, Mike, and appreciate you uh, visiting with us today and, and taking the time to talk about the past. It's great. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate you. Hi, Dave Lapham here. Have you heard about In the Trenches with Dave Lapham presented by First Star Logistics? Catch new episodes from the world of sports and broadcasting. Search for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.